This is AndyTube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to zero out a Singer Model 401A slant omatic. This procedure would also work on a Singer 500A Rocketeer. Now, you may be wondering what that means to zero out a machine. If you've seen some of my tension videos, I, I show you how to zero out the thread tension unit, which I haven't replaced on this machine yet. Poor trouble. But um, when, I, when I first saw this as a process described in the um, service manual, I, I said, what the heck does zero out a machine mean? And I read it, and then it made sense. Now, before I'd ever done a 401A, I had done a 500A Rocketeer. And I went back and looked in that service manual because I didn't remember seeing anything about zero out the machine. And it's because there is no uh, nothing described in the 500A manual as zeroing out the machine. What it's described, the same process there, is called set the byte amplitude stop plates. So, and of course you understand now what this process is, right? Setting the byte amplitude stop plates. Yeah, I didn't understand that either the first time I ever heard of it. So let me let me show you uh, some things here. If you saw my cam stack video, you you saw me. I, I showed you how to remove the cam stack and take it out of the machine and clean it, put it back together, and set it back in the machine. And uh, when I lifted it out, this is sitting on an eccentric post and underneath it you can see the horizontal arm shaft worm gear and uh, what what goes right on here is the famous red lever okay and what the word uh, bite means, it's a bend in a coastline um, for uh, like an open bay. And it also means a slack part or a loop in a rope. And amplitude definition is the extent or range of a quality or process. So, byte amplitude is a very formal name for zigzag stitch width. <laughs> and we normally would call this the stitch width lever. That's the common name for it. Okay. And thank goodness we call it zigzag <laughs> and stuff. But that red lever would be attached right here. And sitting down in the machine, when you move it, it sets the width or the byte amplitude. So this is the byte amplitude bracket. Okay. And this procedure is called setting the byte amplitude stop plates. And what, what that means is the way these sewing machines are designed is they have a stop plate in the machine back behind and below this bracket. So when you move it, I'll show you the back side. When you move it, these two stop plates are what stops the movement. Okay. And this is not a stop plate, but it's very similar to a stop plate. This is screwed down in the machine and it sits behind and below the stop plate and it is adjustable so 
when you move the lever to the number one, then it stops on the stop plate. The other stop plate would be on this side, so when you move the lever to number five, it has to stop. And it's adjustable. The reason they put stop plates in is because that's what stops the movement if the machine's set up right. It doesn't stop because it hits the end of the opening in the indicator faceplate. It actually stops when you move that ampli uh, byte amplitude bracket to the point that this back side hits a stop. And the same on the other way. When you when you're moving it like that over to number five, the back side, the other back side hits the other stop plate. And that's what this procedure called zeroing out the machine or setting the byte plate stop no the byte amplitude stop plates or it's like setting the zigzag width stops okay <laughs> and it's a little bit more complicated uh, on this model because of all the uh, followers and lifters and the combinations you can have and you have a cam stack that's got seven metal cams or pattern discs and then you can get up to 20 or 22 of these top cap top hat cams or pattern discs that that snap on here and you can add more a pattern functions onto the machine okay so how do we get all those patterns to so nice or how do you get a uniform uh, zigzag stitch is that you set the stops so that when you're in a zigzag mode on whatever machine you can go uh, to like zero and be straight stitch then you start moving it to one two three four five and the zigzag stitch gets wider and wider okay and um, I'm going to show you how to do that on this 401 and the procedure is the same on the 500 and it may be the same on the 6 and 700 class uh, touch and sews machines and uh, like I said most zigzag machines have some kind of a stop now it may be the plate it may actually be the opening in the plate that when you when you hit that opening end you, you can't go any farther you go over here to five you, you, you can't go to six or seven or anything like that and it's all designed so that that widest stitch will fit in the opening of the needle plate okay and when you're zigzagging that follower is hitting this paddle on the needle bar driving arm. That's what this is. Needle bar driving arm. And, and the follower follows the pattern and it reflects and moves this paddle and moves the driving arm the other end of the driving arm is connected to the vibrating bracket here that vibrates or swings back and forth making the needle bar and the needle swing back and forth when Singer first came up with this it was called swing needle because that's what they felt it was doing. The needle was swinging left and right. Okay, 
So I want you to know where this vibrating bracket is and the needle bar driving arm because during the testing and setting up you have to watch movement of the needle bar driving arm or of the vibrating bracket or you can be like me and hold it for feel because when you get smaller and smaller zigzag movements for me, I can feel the movement better than I can see little tiny movements of this driving arm. So personally, I don't look or touch the vibrating bracket. Bracket. Some people do. I don't just watch the needle bar driving arm. I hold it with my thumb on the selector shaft and against the side of the arm. So I can feel when there's movement of that driving arm and, and my stationary point is the shaft and I can tell even tiny movements and I'll, I'll show you all this. But way back down in here <laughs> are the two stop plates for the bite amplitude bracket. Take a look at this picture. Okay, so you see, you see that there's uh, something like this on the 401. I don't remember. This is from the bobbin winder uh, uh, tension <laughs> up here, where you mount the bobbin winder from a different machine. But the shape is very similar. On the 500, if I remember right, this wasn't more like a round washer with a part sticking out. It seemed to me like they were more just rectangle pieces of steel with a hole in one end. And it's kind of a slotted hole. You may have noticed on the uh, stop plates up here, it's not a round hole the screw goes in. It's kind of a, a, of a lengthened slot. And that's for the adjustment. And I think on the 500, they were rectangular pieces of steel with a slotted hole. Okay, so to uh, do the first test, there's, there's two tests because you have two stops. One we're going to go this way and, and test the stop for one. And then the other test is going the other way to test the stop for five. Okay. And then you have to, for each of those tests, you have to put your two selector knobs in a certain pattern. Okay. And for the check of position one, you set the knobs in AL. So I'm going to turn this knob up to A, and I'm going to pull and adjust this knob to L and my bite amplitude lever or my stitch width lever is going to be on three for this. If you're on a machine that's different than this and you don't have this special red lever with the indent to hold it at three just put it in the middle of whatever opening you have. Okay? All right, so we got A, L, 3. Okay, now I'm going to uh, rearrange the camera to, to give you a top down view, and I have to hook power up to the machine. Um, I had to put the motor in and, and rig up a. a uh, uh, foot controller because uh, the foot controller I got with this didn't have cords. So let me hook the cords to this and rearrange for a top down view and I'll show you how to test position one. Okay, I think this will this will work here. So I have power I think let me make sure I got power. Yeah, 
so I have power to the machine now and I'm just I'm just I, I you want to run it and you run it slow let me let me give you the deal here you run you run the machine slowly okay and then they say you watch the driving arm or the vibrating bracket while you slowly move this lever over to one and you're going to see it moving less and less and less and the idea is when this lever comes to rest on one this has to have stopped moving and that's the test and if it does your stop plates are adjusted properly and you're good if you get to the one and the vibe uh, the driving arm is still moving it's not adjusted right or if you if you before you get to the one it stops moving whoa that's that's no good that's out of adjustment okay so now I told you that I like to kind of put my thumb here where I can rest it on the shaft and against the bracket so that I can feel the movement okay you don't have to do that that's just what works for me but because that's the case I need two hands to, to do the test and I I'm standing so I don't have a way to really comfortably work the foot pedal so I'm just rigging this up okay it's just this little dinky a clamp thing that I've got that on the uh, on the button of a button style foot controller and let me see if I can just yeah I'd like it even slower than that especially for this video Maybe that'll work. Now you, you can tell that I haven't <laughs> restored the machine, right? Kind of noisy, but 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 look. So so I have my AL setting, right? And I'm on three, and you can see the the follower is following along and it's moving the paddle which is driving the driving arm and you, you can see that pretty readily right okay so then you start moving now don't watch the paddle because even when you the needle bar arm stops moving your paddle is going to stay keep going because the follower is hitting it so, so don't get tricked into watching that paddle. Watch the driving arm or the uh, vibrating bracket. Okay? Then we'll just start moving this slowly towards the one. And it's, the driving arm is still moving, moving closer to one. You see how much smaller? You see how much that moves at three? And then there's two and a half. It's a smaller movement because you're making a narrower stitch. There's two, there's one and a half. Now here's the tricky part. You want to get head this towards one and have the driving arm stop when this gets to one. Oh man. Closer and closer and see it's very hard to see this move but I can feel it still moving then when I get to one it has stopped the driving arm has stopped moving see the paddle still moves forget that the follower down here you can see the click 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 forget that camp stacks moving everything this quit when I got to one and that's perfect so my left 
stop plate is perfectly aligned. Yay! Let me un let me unplug that for a minute. Whew. So what if it wasn't? What if the needle bar stop uh, driving arm stopped before I got to one? Or it didn't stop even when I was at one? To adjust this uh, plate, stop plate, you have to have a screwdriver with the right size bit and you have to go down inside here and a, a nice flashlight will be handy and you have to get on the left stop plate. Okay. And then you would loosen the screw just about a turn. And the and the idea is eventually we're going to have to move that plate closer to the amplitude bracket or away from if it if it stopped too soon you're going to have to back up that bracket so when when it says move to the front that means the front of the machine or towards you so first you got to loosen it okay then you're going to go here and you're going to put this a back into three and then st start running the machine and doing it again closer and closer and closer and closer and closer until the driving arm stops okay so you got the screw out if it stopped say at one and a half it's not going to stop now because you're moving it. You're going to be pushing that stop plate back. Okay. If you get to the end. And it stops. Then you go push the plate in. And you might, you might need to put a screwdriver. Down on the back of that stop plate between the wall of the machine and the stop plate and like nudge it forward under the plate under the under the bracket until it hits that bracket okay now wherever wherever you are going with this lever and the driving arm stops you stop moving the lever. Ta-da! So when this stops, you stop moving the lever. Then you leave everything like that, and you go back down here, and you st stick a screwdriver. I like to use, but you can use whatever, and nudge that loose stop plate forward against the bottom of the bite amplitude bracket and then you leave that there and you tighten the screw back up okay there so it makes sense right you loosen the screw a turn so the bracket uh, stop stop plate can move you come back and you do this test again with the motor running and you move the red lever until this stops. When it stops, you stop moving the lever, lever and you go back and tighten the plate at that position. And then once you do that, you know, you want to come back and run the test again to see if you got the right setting. Okay, so you're still in AL, you made the correction, you start at 3, and you start moving it, moving it, moving it, and at 1, the lever stops, and the needle bar back and forth movement should stop. That means you made the right correction. Aren't you good?
Good job. Okay. So, can you guess how you check the position 5? It's going to be the same story, right? You're going to make a setting here, power on the machine, and start moving this to the right, to the right, to the right. Watching or feeling the movement, and when it gets to 5, this should stop. If it does, you're good. If it doesn't, we'll go from there. But the thing you need to know now is the stop for position 5, the settings. And the way you set um, position 5 is not AL. It's D like David and K like hmm, Kite. All right, once you have your D, K, 3, then apply power. You're back in the 3 position. Get your power, get your machine running, however you do it. <laughs> See, we're moving. I'm going to watch, watch, or feel or feel, whatever works for you, and you're going to start going towards 5, and it's going to get less and less movement, but you want it to keep moving all the way to 5. Okay, now at 5, it should be stopped like this. Okay? Yep, I'm stopped. So it starts out, and, and like when we went this way, the movement got less and less. When we go this way, it's less movement, less movement. Wow, we're so close to five, but it's still moving a tiny bit. And on five, it stops. So, my setting on this side was okay. That's how you check. And again, if it didn't stop at 5 or stopped before 5, you know what to do now. You're going to go down here. and This time, you're going to loosen the stop plate on the right. You're going to loosen that screw there. You're going to come back. Put this back in the center. You're still on DK, right? David Kite. Start your machine running. And you move this to the right until this stops. And wherever it stops, you stop. You stop moving that off your power go back down in here and tighten up the screw on that right stop plate and now you've made the setting correct and again you can you can come back and test it you know you always want to check movement 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 a little bit of movement and stop movement. Okay. And do do check because not not because I doubt your work, but check because it's easy for things to move a little bit, you know. One thing I didn't say is you loosen that, you move this until the lever stops, and I just said tighten that up, but don't forget you have to go in and push that stop plate up until it comes to rest on the back of the bracket. That's what's going to be your stop. Right? Then you tighten it. Alright. 
Tell me you've seen that before. <laughs> Tell me you've seen that one in a video before. If you have, give me a link because I'd like to see how I did. <laughs> bite amplitude bracket and bite amplitude stop plate you're going to have. Now you know how to do it. No problem, right? Now, as a little bonus here, I meant a couple of videos to, to, to tell you this. But you know, when, when you move this around, like it, it's usually on A, K, 3 for straight, okay? And a lot of times you're going to have some, oh, move it to B, L. Okay, so you, you push this in, you move it to B like boy or D like David. And then you move, pull this one and move it from K to L or maybe up to O. The problem is all those little movements, the oil on these parts always goes down. That's why they're always gunky at the bottom of old machines. And what I'm suggesting is that any time you make a movement, a change, go the whole spectrum. When you're done, don't go back to A. Go, go um, the whole thing a couple times and then go back to A. And if you're up here and you're going to go back to straight stitch on K, don't just move it down. Move it up and down a couple of times and then make your setting. That way you're always dragging a little oil back up on that index pin. You know, so some someday you're going to want to go up here and use the special and it's going to be dry and you're going to be forcing it and wondering what's what the heck's wrong with my machine. It worked. It worked last year when I did it. <laughs> so just a tip. Do the whole movement. And uh, if if I was going to sew with a machine like this that had been sitting for a day or longer. I would uh, turn it on and I would run the motor at a low speed like that for about three to five minutes and you know I could be getting my material ready getting a cup of coffee doing whatever then I would come back and move this back and forth a few times I would move my dials a few times and basically what I'm saying is warm up the machine. You know, put it in zigzag and let that needle vibrating bracket swing a few times. Because oil just settles. You know, it's a mechanical machine. It doesn't have a little electric motor and plastic. It's steel on steel stuff. So it's a very good idea to let it warm up a little bit. Then you can sew all day on it, you know? That's fine. And when you go to put your machine away, uh, finish it for the day, uh, lift your lever, take your uh, lint brush. I got one handy here. Sorry, I do not. Take your, your lint brush and brush, brush off the needle bar and brush off the sewing area, brush off the lint from uh, inside your tension unit. And what the heck, it's only going to take a moment when you go to put this back on AK3 or whatever, swing it a little bit a couple of times and spread the oil when you're all finished, okay? So, whoop. when you're going to start, um, it's not locked in. There we go. Um, go ahead and run the motor slowly for two or three minutes. Let the hand wheel gear grease get spread. Uh, you know, put it in a zigzag, like even two, and let it just let it just uh, run for three or five minutes and warm everything up. I think you'll be happier with the way the machine operates. And I think it'll last uh, 
longer for you. So that's zeroing out the 401A Slantomatic or the 500A Rocketeer. Hmm. Like my friend Shelly said, you can learn something new every time you watch one of my videos. Hey, come back and see me, okay? And please take care.